Good morning, my fellow scientists. It is Thursday, May 18th, 2017. I'm going to talk to you about how to construct an old school salt bridge battery. This is a demonstration that gets done in high schools and freshman chemistry. It's a nice demonstration of how a voltaic cell works and how different chemistries produce different voltages. I'm going to do this demo today in order to prove to myself that the iron anode is working as expected and that the iron EDTA cathode can accept electrons again as anticipated. And the best way to test an assumption is to use the oldest of the old school reliable techniques. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate. First, we're going to put on some goggles. Then we're going to heat a piece of glass tubing until it starts to bend. Took me about five minutes, but we got a nice U shape. Now I'm going to score that piece of glass with a diamond scribe and then cut it off with a Dremel and then deburr it a little bit to make sure I don't uh, cut myself. We're going to get some potassium chloride and add the agar to it. That'll make a nice gel that'll hold the solution into the U-tube, the other kind of U-tube. Mix that up on a little hot plate and then it'll melt and we add that to the glass tube. Put a piece of parafilm over it to make sure that it doesn't leak when we fill it the rest of the way. A little hard to get my fingers in there, but you can see what I'm doing. And then fill the U-tube up all the way to the top. We're gonna let that cool. While we do let that cool, we're gonna assemble the cell. Put iron cloth on one side of the cell and buffer on the other side of the cell. Unwrap my cooled U-tube and use it to join the two beakers such that they are now connected. You can see I get a voltage 0.42 volts. Now I'm going to add some copper chloride to the cathode cell. Copper is easily reduced and so we get a really nice 0.9 volts as iron on the left side is being oxidized and copper chloride on the right side is being reduced. Copper actually adds energy when it's reduced because it's very favorable. Now let's try the iron EDTA. We're gonna reassemble the cell, put the iron or steel wool into the anode side, add some buffer. I've got my salt bridge already assembled there. And then at that point, we're gonna add buffer to the cathode side as well, and a little bit of nichrome wire, uh, nickel chrome wire that will not participate in the reaction, ideally. Connect that up to the voltmeter and add my iron-3 EDTA. It's a nice soluble form of iron-3, which can be easily reduced to iron-2. Net potential off the iron, iron EDTA cell is about 0.5 volts, which is pretty reasonable. So what do we see there? When we started off, we had just iron in buffer. That iron wanted to be oxidized to iron oxide or iron hydroxide that gave a voltage against just buffer on the far side of about 0.2 to 0.3 volts, indicating that that's not a very favorable reaction without something favorable to take up those electrons. Then I added copper chloride, which loves to be reduced. That is happy to take up electrons producing copper metal on the surface of that chromal wire. And that's so favorable that we get a bonus of about 0.7 volts up to almost one volt when we add the copper chloride. That's to be expected. That's almost the same thing as the classic zinc copper cell that is the standard demonstration in every freshman chemistry course. I add iron EDTA, I get less voltage, about 0.5 volts, indicating that the reduction of copper 3 EDTA is less favorable than the reduction of copper chloride, but it's still favorable, which is good for me because that means I can build a battery using iron EDTA on the cathode side and it will still give some bonus to the energy more than we get from just oxidizing iron and producing hydrogen, for instance. So I hope you find that interesting, a little sanity check, just to make sure everything was going to work out in the end, at least a little bit, on this all-iron battery. Tune in next time for more about chemistry, and batteries, and nanotechnology, scientific research, here in the Allen Lab.